Brought to you by wikivd.com United States Navy The United States Navy is the Naval Warfare Service branch of the United States Armed Forces and one of the seven uniformed services of the United States. The U.S. Navy is the largest, most capable Navy in the world with the highest combined battle fleet tonnage. The U.S. Navy has the world's largest aircraft carrier fleet with 11 in service, one in the reserve fleet, and two new carriers under construction, with 322,421 personnel on active duty, and 107,577 in the Navy Reserve. The Navy is the third largest of the service branches. It has 276 deployable combat vessels and more than 3,700 operational aircraft. The U.S. Navy traces its origins to the Continental Navy which was established during the American Revolutionary War, and was effectively disbanded as a separate entity shortly thereafter. The U.S. Navy played a major role in the American Civil War by blockading the Confederacy and seizing control of its rivers. It played the central role in the World War II defeat of Imperial Japan. The 21st century U.S. Navy maintains a sizable global presence, deploying in strength in such areas as the Western Pacific, the Mediterranean and the Indian Ocean. It is a blue water navy with the ability to project force onto the littoral regions of the world engage in forward deployments during peacetime and rapidly respond to regional crises, making it a frequent actor in the U.S. foreign and military policy. The Navy is administratively managed by the Department of the Navy which is headed by the Civilian Secretary of the Navy. The Department of the Navy is itself a division of the Department of Defense which is headed by the Secretary of Defense. The Chief of Naval Operations is the most senior naval officer serving in the Department of the Navy Mission. The U.S. Navy is a seaborne branch of the military of the United States. The Navy's three primary areas of responsibility, U.S. Navy training manuals state that the mission of the U.S. Armed Forces is to prepare and conduct prompt and sustained combat operations in support of the national interest. As part of that establishment the U.S. Navy's functions comprise sea control power projection and nuclear deterrence in addition to sea lift duties. Origins The Navy was rooted in the colonial seafaring tradition, which produced a large community of sailors, captains and shipbuilders. In the early stages of the American Revolutionary War, Massachusetts had its own Massachusetts Naval Militia. The rationale for establishing a national navy was debated in the Second Continental Congress. Supporters argued that a navy would protect shipping, defend the coast and make it easier to seek out support from foreign countries. Detractors counted that challenging the British Royal Navy then the world's preeminent naval power was a foolish undertaking. Commander-in-Chief George Washington resolved the debate when he commissioned the ocean-going schooner USS Hannah to interdict British merchant ships and reported the captures to the Congress. On 13 October 1775, the Continental Congress authorized the purchase of two vessels to be armed. For a cruise against British merchant ships, this resolution created the Continental Navy and is considered the first establishment of the U.S. Navy. The Continental Navy achieved mixed results. It was successful in a number of engagements and raided many British merchant vessels but it lost 24 of its vessels and at one point was reduced to two in active service. In August 1785, after the Revolutionary War had drawn to a close Congress had sold the last ship remaining in the Continental Navy due to a lack of funds to maintain the ship or support a navy.
In 1972 the Chief of Naval Operations Admiral Elmo Zum Walt authorized the Navy to celebrate its birthday on 13 October to honor the establishment of the Continental Navy in 1775. From re-establishment to the Civil War the United States was without a navy for nearly a decade, a state of affairs that exposed U.S. maritime merchant ships to a series of attacks by the Barbary pirates. The sole armed maritime presence between 1790 and the launching of the U.S. Navy's first warships in 1797 was the U.S. Revenue Cutter Service the primary predecessor of the U.S. Coast Guard. Although the U.S. RCS conducted operations against the pirates, their depredations far outstripped its abilities, and Congress passed the Naval Act of 1794 that established a permanent standing navy on 27 March. 1794. The Naval Act ordered the construction and manning of six frigates and by October 1797, the first three were brought into service and, due to his strong posture on having a strong standing navy during this period John Adams is often called the father of the American Navy. In 1798-99 the Navy was involved in an undeclared quasi-war with France. From 1801 to 1805, in the First Barbary War the U.S. Navy defended U.S. ships from the Barbary pirates, blockaded the Barbary ports and executed attacks against the Barbary fleets. The U.S. Navy saw substantial action in the War of 1812 where it was victorious in 11 single-ship duels with the Royal Navy. It drove all significant British forces off Lake Erie and Lake Champlain and prevented them from becoming British-controlled zones. The result was a major defeat for the British invasion of New York State and the defeat of the military threat from the Native American allies of the British. Despite this the U.S. Navy was unable to prevent the British from blockading its ports and landing troops. After the war the U.S. Navy again focused its attention on protecting American shipping assets sending squadrons to the Caribbean the Mediterranean, where it participated in the Second Barbary War that ended piracy in the region South America. Africa and the Pacific. From 1819 to the outbreak of the Civil War the Africa Squadron operated to suppress the slave trade seizing 36 slave ships although its contribution was smaller than that of the much larger British Royal Navy. During the Mexican-American War the U.S. Navy blockaded Mexican ports capturing or burning the Mexican fleet in the Gulf of California and capturing all major cities in Baja California Peninsula. In 1846-1848 the Navy successfully used the Pacific Squadron under Commodore Robert Stockton and its Marines and Blue Jackets to facilitate the capture of California, with large-scale land operations coordinated, with the local militia organized in the California Battalion. The Navy conducted the U.S. Military's first large-scale amphibious joint operation by successfully landing 12,000 Army troops with their equipment in one day at Veracruz, Mexico, when larger guns were needed to bombard Veracruz Navy volunteers landed large guns and manned them in the successful bombardment and capture of the city. This successful landing and capture of Veracruz opened the way for the capture of Mexico City and the end of the war. The U.S. Navy established itself as a player in the United States foreign policy through the actions of Commodore Matthew Perry in Japan which resulted in the Convention of Kanagawa in 1854. Naval power played a significant role during the American Civil War, in which the Union had a distinct advantage over the Confederacy on the seas. A Union blockade on all major ports shut down exports and the coastal trade, but blockade runners provided a thin lifeline. The Brown Water Navy's control of the river systems made internal travel difficult for Confederates. 
and easy for the Union. The Warsaw ironclad warships in combat for the first time. At the Battle of Hampton Roads in 1862 which pitted against for two decades after the war. However the U.S. Navy's fleet was neglected and became technologically obsolete. 20th century A modernization program beginning in the 1880s, when the first steel-hulled warships stimulated the American steel industry and the new steel navy was born. This rapid expansion of the U.S. Navy and its easy victory over the Spanish Navy in 1898 brought a new respect for American technical quality. Rapid building of at first pre-dreadnoughts then dreadnoughts brought the U.S. in line with the navies of countries such as Britain and Germany. In 1907 most of the Navy's battleships, with several support vessels dubbed the Great White Fleet, were showcased in a 14-month circumnavigation of the world. Ordered by President Theodore Roosevelt it was a mission designed to demonstrate the Navy's capability to extend to the global theater. By 1911 the U.S. had begun building the Super Dreadnoughts at a pace to eventually become competitive with Britain. World War I and interwar years The U.S. Navy saw little action during World War I. It concentrated on mine-laying operations against German U-boats. Hesitation by the senior command meant that naval forces were not contributed until late 1917. Battleship Division 9 was dispatched to Britain and served as the 6th Battle Squadron of the British Grand Fleet. Its presence allowed the British to decommission some older ships and reuse the crews on smaller vessels. Destroyers and U.S. Naval Air Force units contributed to the anti-submarine operations. The strength of the United States Navy grew under an ambitious shipbuilding program associated with the Naval Act of 1916. Naval construction especially of battleships was limited by the Washington Naval Conference of 1921-22. The aircraft carriers and were built on the hulls of partially built battle cruisers that had been cancelled by the treaty. The New Deal used public works administration funds to build warships such as and, by 1936 with the completion of the U.S., Navy possessed a carrier fleet of 165,000 tons displacement. Although this figure was nominally recorded as 135,000 tons to comply with treaty limitations, Franklin Roosevelt, the number two official in the Navy Department during World War I, appreciated the Navy and gave it strong support. In return senior leaders were eager for innovation and experimented with new technologies such as magnetic torpedoes, and developed a strategy called War Plan Orange for victory in the Pacific in a hypothetical war with Japan that would eventually become reality. World War II The U.S. Navy grew into a formidable force in the years prior to World War II with battleship production being restarted in 1937 commencing with, though ultimately unsuccessful Japan attempted to neutralize this strategic threat, with a surprise attack on Pearl Harbor on 7 December 1941. Following American entry into the war, the U.S. Navy grew tremendously as the United States was faced with a two-front war on the seas. It achieved notable acclaim in the Pacific theater where it was instrumental to the Allies' successful island hopping campaign. The U.S. Navy participated in many significant battles including the Battle of the Coral Sea, the Battle of Midway, the Solomon Islands campaign, the Battle of the Philippine Sea, the Battle of Lake Gulf and the Battle of Okinawa. By war's end in 1945 the U.S. Navy had added hundreds of new ships including 18 aircraft carriers and 8 battleships and had over 70% of the world's total numbers and total tonnage of naval vessels of 1,000 tons or greater.
At its peak the U.S. Navy was operating 6,768 ships on VJ Day in August 1945. Doctrine had significantly shifted by the end of the war. The U.S. Navy had followed in the footsteps of the navies of Great Britain and Germany which favoured concentrated groups of battleships as their main offensive naval weapons. The development of the aircraft carrier and its devastating utilization by the Japanese against the U.S. at Pearl Harbor however shifted U.S. thinking. The Pearl Harbor attack destroyed or took out of action a significant number of U.S. Navy battleships. This placed much of the burden of retaliating against the Japanese on the small number of aircraft carriers. Cold War the potential for armed conflict with the Soviet Union during the Cold War pushed the U.S. Navy to continue its technological advancement by developing new weapons systems, ships and aircraft. U.S. naval strategy changed to that of forward deployment in support of U.S. allies, with an emphasis on carrier battle groups. The Navy was a major participant in the Vietnam War blockaded Cuba during the Cuban Missile Crisis and through the use of ballistic missile submarines, became an important aspect of the United States' nuclear strategic deterrence policy. The U.S. Navy conducted various combat operations in the Persian Gulf against Iran in 1987 and 1988, most notably Operation Praying Mantis. The Navy was extensively involved in Operation Urgent Fury, Operation Desert Shield, Operation Desert Storm, Operation Deliberate Force, Operation Allied Force, Operation Desert Fox, and Operation Southern Watch. The U.S. Navy has also been involved in search and rescue, search and salvage operations, sometimes in conjunction with vessels of other countries as well as with U.S. Coast Guard ships. Two examples are the 1966 Palomares B-52 crash incident and search for the nuclear bombs, and Task Force 71 of the 7th Fleet Operation in Search. For Korean Airlines Flight 007 shot down by the Soviets on 1 September 1983. 21st Century the U.S. Navy continues to be a major support to U.S. interests in the 21st century. Since the end of the Cold War it has shifted its focus from preparations for large-scale war with the Soviet Union to special operations and strike missions in regional conflicts. The Navy participated in Operation Enduring Freedom Operation Iraqi Freedom and is a major participant in the ongoing war on terror largely in this capacity. Development continues on new ships and weapons including the and the literal combat ship. Because of its size weapons technology and ability to project force far from U.S. shores, the current U.S. Navy remains a potent asset for the United States. Moreover, it is the principal means through which the U.S. maintains international global order namely by safeguarding global trade and protecting allied nations. In 2007 the U.S. Navy joined with the U.S. Marine Corps and U.S. Coast Guard to adopt a new maritime strategy called a cooperative strategy for 21st century sea power that raises the notion of prevention of war to the same philosophical level as the conduct of war. The strategy was presented by the Chief of Naval Operations, the Commandant of the Marine Corps, and Commandant of the Coast Guard at the International Sea Power Symposium in Newport. Re on 17 October 2007, the strategy recognized the economic links of the global system, and how any disruption due to regional crises, man-made and natural, can adversely impact the U.S. economy and quality of life. This new strategy charts a course for the Navy Coast Guard and Marine Corps to work collectively with each other and international partners to prevent these crises from occurring or reacting quickly should one occur to prevent negative impacts on the U.S. In 2010 Chief of Naval Operations Admiral Gary Roughhead 
noted that demands on the Navy have grown as the fleet has shrunk, and that in the face of declining budgets in the future the U.S. Navy must rely even more on international partnerships. In its 2013 budget request, the Navy focused on retaining all 11 big deck carriers at the expense of cutting numbers of smaller ships and delaying the SSBN replacement. By the next year the USN found itself unable to maintain 11 aircraft carriers in the face of the expiration of budget relief offered by the Bipartisan Budget Act of 2013, and CNO Jonathan Greenert said that a 10-ship carrier fleet would not be able to sustainably support military requirements. The British First Sea Lord George Zambellas said that the USN had switched from outcome-led to resource-led planning. One significant change in U.S. policymaking that is having a major effect on naval planning is the pivot to East Asia. In response, the Secretary of the Navy Ray Mabus has stated that 60% of the total U.S. fleet will be deployed to the Pacific by the year 2020. The Navy's most recent 30-year shipbuilding plan published in 2016 calls for a future fleet of 350 ships in order to meet the challenges of an increasingly competitive international environment. Organization The U.S. Navy falls under the administration of the Department of the Navy, under civilian leadership of the Secretary of the Navy. The most senior naval officer is the Chief of Naval Operations, a four-star admiral who is immediately under and reports to the Secretary of the Navy. At the same time the Chief of Naval Operations is one of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, which is the second highest deliberatory body of the armed forces after the United States National Security Council although it only plays an advisory role to the President and does not nominally form part of the chain of command. The Secretary of the Navy and Chief of Naval Operations are responsible for organizing recruiting training and equipping the Navy so that it is ready for operation under the command of the Unified Combat Command Commanders. Operating Forces There are nine components in the operating forces of the U.S. Navy, the United States Fleet Forces Command, United States Pacific Fleet, United States Naval Forces Central Command, United States Naval Forces Europe, Naval Network Warfare Command, Navy Reserve, United States Naval Special Warfare Command, Operational Test and Evaluation Force and Military Sea Lift Command, Fleet Forces Command controls a number of unique capabilities including Military Sea Lift Command, Naval Expeditionary Combat Command and Navy Cyber Forces. The United States Navy has six active numbered fleets, 3rd, 5th, 6th, 7th Fleet, and 10th Fleets are each led by a Vice Admiral and the 4th Fleet is led by a Rear Admiral. These six fleets are further grouped under Fleet Forces Command Pacific Fleet, Naval Forces Europe Africa and Naval Forces Central Command, whose commander also doubles as Commander Fifth Fleet, the first three commands being led by four Star Admirals. The United States First Fleet existed after the Second World War from 1947, but it was redesignated the Third Fleet in early 1973. In early 2008, the Navy reactivated the United States Fourth Fleet to control operations in the area controlled by Southern Command which consists of U.S. assets in and around Central and South America. Shore establishments Shore establishments exist to support the mission of the fleet through the use of facilities on land. Among the commands of the Shore Establishment are the Naval Education and Training Command, the Naval Meteorology and Oceanography Command, the Space and Naval Warfare Systems Command, the Naval Facilities Engineering Command, the Naval Supply Systems Command, the Naval Air Systems Command, the Naval Sea Systems Command, the Bureau of Medicine and Surgery, 
The Bureau of Naval Personnel, the United States Naval Academy, the Naval Safety Center, the Naval Strike and Air Warfare Center, and the United States Naval Observatory. Official Navy websites list the Office of the Chief of Naval Operations and the Chief of Naval Operations as part of the Shore Establishment. But these two entities effectively sit superior to the other organizations, playing a coordinating role. United States Marine Corps In 1834, the United States Marine Corps came under the Department of the Navy. Historically, the Navy has had a unique relationship with the USMC partly because they both specialize in seaborne operations. Together the Navy and Marine Corps form the Department of the Navy and report to the Secretary of the Navy. However, the Marine Corps is a distinct separate service branch. With its own uniformed service chief the Commandant of the Marine Corps a four-star general. The Marine Corps depends on the Navy for medical support and religious support. Thus Navy officers and enlisted sailors fulfill these roles. When attached to Marine Corps units deployed to an operational environment they generally wear Marine camouflage uniforms but otherwise they wear Navy dress uniforms unless they opt to conform to Marine Corps grooming standards. In the operational environment, as an expeditionary force specializing in amphibious operations Marines often embark on Navy ships to conduct operations from beyond territorial waters. Marine units deploying as part of a Marine Air Ground Task Force operate under the command of the existing Marine chain of command. Although Marine units routinely operate from amphibious assault ships, the relationship has evolved over the years much as the commander of the carrier air group wing does not work for the carrier commanding office but coordinates with the ship's CO and staff. Some marine aviation squadrons usually fixed wing assigned to carrier air wings train and operate alongside Navy squadrons, they fly similar missions, and often fly sorties together under the cognizance of the CAG. Aviation is where the Navy and Marines share the most common ground since aircrews are guided in their use of aircraft by standard procedures outlined in series of publications known as NATOPS manuals. United States Coast Guard the United States Coast Guard in its peacetime role with the Department of Homeland Security fulfills its law enforcement and rescue role in the maritime environment. It provides law enforcement attachments to Navy vessels where they perform arrests and other law enforcement duties during naval boarding and interdiction missions. In times of war, the Coast Guard operates as a service in the Navy. At other times, Coast Guard port security units are sent overseas to guard the security of ports and other assets. The Coast Guard also jointly staffs the Navy's naval coastal warfare groups and squadrons, which oversee defense efforts in foreign littoral combat and in shore areas. Personnel the United States Navy has nearly 500,000 personnel, approximately a quarter of whom are in ready reserve. Of those on active duty more than 80% are enlisted sailors and around 15% are commissioned officers. The rest are midshipmen of the United States Naval Academy, and midshipmen of the Naval Reserve Officer Training Corps at over 180 universities around the country and officer candidates at the Navy's Officer Candidate School. Enlisted sailors complete basic military training at boot camp and then are sent to complete training for their individual careers. Sailors prove they have mastered skills and deserve responsibilities by completing personnel qualification standards tasks and examinations. Among the most important is the warfare qualification which denotes a journeyman level of capability in surface warfare aviation warfare, information dominance warfare naval aircrew special warfare CB warfare submarine warfare, 
or expeditionary warfare. Many qualifications are denoted on a sailor's uniform with U.S. Navy badges and insignia. Uniforms The uniforms of the U.S. Navy have evolved gradually since the first uniform regulations. Four officers were issued in 1802 on the formation of the Navy Department. The predominant colors of U.S. Navy uniforms are navy blue and white. U.S. Navy uniforms were based on Royal Navy uniforms of the time and have tended to follow that template. Commissioned Officers The commissioned officer ranks of the U.S. Navy are divided into three categories, junior officers, senior officers and flag officers. Junior officers are those officers in pay grades 01 to 04, while senior officers are those in pay grades 05 and 06, and flag officers are those in pay grades of 07 and above. Badges of the United States Navy Insignia and badges of the United States Navy are military badges issued by the United States Department of the Navy to naval service members who achieve certain qualifications and accomplishments while serving on both active and reserve duty in the United States Navy. Most naval aviation insignia are also permitted for wear on uniforms of the United States Marine Corps, as described in Chapter 5 of U.S. Navy Uniform Regulations badges are categorized as breast insignia and identification badges. Breast insignia are further divided between command and warfare and other qualification. Insignia come in the form of metal pin-on devices worn on formal uniforms and embroidered tape strips worn on work uniforms. For the purpose of this article the general term insignia shall be used to describe both as it is done in Navy uniform regulations. The term badge although used ambiguously in other military branches and in informal speak to describe any pin. Patch or tab is exclusive to identification badges and authorized marksmanship awards according to the language in Navy Uniform Regulations Chapter 5. Below are just a few of the many badges maintained by the Navy. The rest can be seen in the article cited at the top of this section. Bases the size, complexity, and international presence of the United States Navy requires a large number of Navy installations to support its operations, while the majority of bases are located inside the United States itself. The Navy maintains a significant number of facilities abroad either in the U.S. controlled territories or in foreign countries under a status of forces agreement. Eastern United States. The second largest concentration of installations is at Hampton Roads, Virginia, where the Navy occupies over 36,000 acres of land. Located at Hampton Roads, a naval station Norfolk home port of the Atlantic Fleet, Naval Air Station Oceana, a master jet base, Naval Amphibious Base Little Creek and Training Support Center Hampton Roads as well as a number of Navy and commercial shipyards that service Navy vessels. The Aegis Training and Readiness Center is located at the Naval Support Activity South Potomac in Dahlgren, Virginia. Maryland is home to NAS Patux on River which houses the Navy's Test Pilot School. Also located in Maryland is the United States Naval Academy situated in Annapolis. NS Newport in Newport, Rhode Island is home to many schools and tenant commands, including the Officer Candidate School Naval Undersea Warfare Center and more, and also maintains inactive ships. There is also a naval base in Charleston, South Carolina. This is home to the Nuclear A School and the Nuclear Field Power School, and one of two nuclear prototype schools. The state of Florida is the location of three major bases NS Mayport, the Navy's fourth largest 
In Jacksonville, Florida, NAS Jacksonville a master air anti-submarine warfare base, and NAS Pensacola, home of the Naval Education and Training Command. The Naval Air Technical Training Center that provides specialty training for enlisted aviation personnel and is the primary flight training base for Navy and Marine Corps Naval Flight Officers and enlisted Naval Aircrewmen. There is also NSA Panama City, Florida, which is home to the Navy Diving and Salvage Training Center. The main U.S. Navy submarine bases on the East Coast are located in Naval Submarine Base New London in Groton, Connecticut and NSB Kings Bay in Kings Bay, Georgia. The Portsmouth Naval Shipyard near Portsmouth, New Hampshire which repairs naval submarines. NS Great Lakes north of Chicago. Illinois is the home of the Navy's boot camp for enlisted sailors. The Washington Navy Yard in Washington, D.C. is the Navy's oldest shore establishment and serves as a ceremonial and administrative center for the U.S. Navy home to the Chief of Naval Operations and is headquarters for numerous commands. Western United States and Hawaii The Navy's largest complex is Naval Air Weapons Station China Lake, California which covers 1.1 million acres of land, or approximately one-third of the United States Navy's total land holdings. Naval Base San Diego, California is the main home port of the Pacific Fleet. NAS North Island is located on the north side of Coronado and is home to headquarters for Naval Air Forces and Naval Air Force Pacific. The bulk of the Pacific Fleet's helicopter squadrons and part of the West Coast Aircraft Carrier Fleet. NAB Coronado is located on the southern end of the Coronado Island and is home to the Navy's West Coast SEAL teams and special boat units. NAB Coronado is also home to the Naval Special Warfare Center, the primary training center for SEALs. The other major collection of naval bases on the West Coast is in Puget Sound, Washington. Among the NS Everett is one of the newer bases, and the Navy states that it is its most modern facility. NAS Fallon, Nevada serves as the primary training ground for Navy Strike Air Crews and is home to the Naval Strike Air Warfare Center. Master jet bases are also located at NAS Lemur, California and NAS Whidbey Island, Washington, while the carrier-based airborne early warning aircraft community and major air test activities are located at NAS Point Mugu, California. The naval presence in Hawaii is centered on NS Pearl Harbor, which hosts the headquarters of the Pacific Fleet and many of its subordinate commands. United States Territories Guam, an island strategically located in the western Pacific Ocean, maintains a sizable U.S. Navy presence including NB Guam, the westernmost U.S. territory. It contains a natural deep water harbor capable of harboring aircraft carriers in emergencies. Its naval air station was deactivated in 1995 and its flight activities transferred to nearby Anderson Air Force Base, Puerto Rico in the Caribbean formerly housed NS Roosevelt Roads which was shut down in 2004 shortly after the controversial closure of the live ordnance training area on nearby VX Island. Foreign countries The largest overseas base is the United States Fleet Activities Yokosuka, Japan, which serves as the home port for the Navy's largest forward-deployed fleet, and is a significant base of operations in the Western Pacific. European operations revolve around facilities in Italy with NSA Naples as the home port for the 6th Fleet and Command Naval Region Europe Africa Southwest Asia and additional facilities in nearby Gaeta. There is also NS Rota in Spain and NSA Suda Bay in Greece. In the Middle East, naval facilities are located almost exclusively in countries bordering the Persian Gulf.
with NSA Bahrain serving as the headquarters of U.S. Naval Forces Central Command and U.S. Fifth Fleet. NS Guantanamo Bay in Cuba is the oldest overseas facility, and has become known in recent years as the location of a detention camp for suspected al-Qaeda operatives. Equipment The Navy operates over 280 ships, 3,650 aircraft, 50,000 non-combat vehicles and owns 75,200 buildings on 3,300,000 acre. In addition the Navy has more than 100 vessels operated by the military sea lift command crewed by a combination of civilian contractors and a small number of uniformed naval personnel. Ships The names of commissioned ships of the U.S. Navy are prefixed with the letters USS designating United States ship, non-commissioned, civilian manned vessels of the Navy have names that begin with USNS standing for United States Naval Ship. The names of ships are officially selected by the Secretary of the Navy, often to honor important people or places. Additionally, each ship is given a letter-based hull classification symbol to indicate the vessel's type and number. All ships in the Navy inventory are placed in the Naval Vessel Register, which is a part of the Navy list. The register tracks data such as the current status of a ship, the date of its commissioning and the date of its decommissioning. Vessels that are removed from the register prior to disposal are said to be stricken from the register. The Navy also maintains a reserve fleet of inactive vessels that are maintained for reactivation in times of need. The U.S. Navy was one of the first to install nuclear reactors aboard naval vessels. Today nuclear energy powers all active U.S. aircraft carriers and submarines. In the case of the carrier, two naval reactors give the ship almost unlimited range and provide enough electrical energy to power a city of 100,000 people. The U.S. Navy previously operated nuclear-powered cruisers, but all have been decommissioned. The U.S. Navy had identified a need for 313 combat ships in early 2010s but under its plans at the time could only afford 232 to 243. In March 2014 the Navy started counting self-deployable support ships such as minesweepers surveillance craft and tugs in the battle fleet in order to reach a count of 272 as of October 2016 and it includes ships that have been put in shrink wrap. Aircraft carriers An aircraft carrier is typically deployed along with a host of additional vessels, forming a carrier strike group. The supporting ships which usually include three all four Aegis-equipped cruisers and destroyers a frigate and two attack submarines are tasked with protecting the carrier from air missile sea and undersea threats as well as providing additional strike capabilities themselves. Ready logistics support for the group is provided by a combined ammunition oiler and supply ship. Modern carriers are named after American admirals and politicians usually presidents. The Navy has a statutory requirement for a minimum of 11 aircraft carriers. Currently there are 10 that are deployable and one that is currently undergoing extensive systems and technologies testing until around 2021. Amphibious warfare vessels Amphibious assault ships are the centerpieces of U.S. amphibious warfare, and fulfill the same power projection role as aircraft carriers except that their striking force centers on land forces instead of aircraft. They deliver command coordinate and fully support all elements of a 2,200-strong marine expeditionary unit in an amphibious assault, using both air and amphibious vehicles resembling small aircraft carriers. Amphibious assault ships are capable of V-S-T-O-L-S-T-O-V-L-V-T-O-L tilt rotor and rotary wing aircraft operations. They also contain a well deck 
to support the use of landing craft, air cushion and other amphibious assault watercraft. Recently, amphibious assault ships have begun to be deployed as the core of an expeditionary strike group, which usually consists of an additional amphibious transport dock and dock landing ship. For amphibious warfare and an Aegis-equipped cruiser and destroyer frigate and attack submarine. For group defense, amphibious assault ships are typically named after World War II aircraft carriers. Amphibious transport docks are warships that embark transport and land marines supplies and equipment in a supporting role during amphibious warfare missions. With a landing platform, amphibious transport docks also have the capability to serve as secondary aviation support for an expeditionary group. All amphibious transport docks can operate helicopters LCACs and other conventional amphibious vehicles while the newer San Antonio class of ships has been explicitly designed to operate all three elements of the Marines. Mobility Triad Expeditionary Fighting Vehicles The V-22 Osprey Tiltrotor Aircraft and LCACs Amphibious transport docks are named after U.S. cities with the exception of the named after a former congressman and USMC officer and named for Mesa Verde National Park in Colorado. The dock landing ship is a medium amphibious transport that is designed specifically to support and operate LCACs though it is able to operate other amphibious assault vehicles in the United States inventory as well. Dock landing ships are normally deployed as a component of an expeditionary strike group's amphibious assault contingent operating as a secondary launch platform for LCACs. All dock landing ships are named after cities or important places in U.S. and U.S. naval history. Cruisers Cruisers are large surface combat vessels that conduct anti-air, anti-missile warfare surface warfare anti-submarine warfare and strike operations independently, or as members of a larger task force. Modern guided missile cruisers were developed out of a need to counter the anti-ship missile threat facing the United States Navy. This led to the development of the AN SPY-1 phased array radar and the standard missile. With the Aegis Combat System coordinating the two, S were the first to be equipped with Aegis, and were put to use primarily as anti-air and anti-missile defense in a battle force protection role. Later developments of vertical launch systems and the Tomahawk missile gave cruisers additional long-range land and sea strike capability, making them capable of both offensive and defensive battle operations. The Ticonderoga class is the only active class of cruiser. All cruisers in this class are named after battles. Destroyers Destroyers are multi-mission medium-surface ships capable of sustained performance in anti-air, anti-submarine, anti-ship and offensive strike operations. Like cruisers, Guided missile destroyers are primarily focused on surface strikes using Tomahawk missiles and fleet defense through Aegis and the standard missile. Destroyers additionally specialize in anti-submarine warfare and are equipped with VLA rockets and LAMPS Mk-3 Seahawk helicopters to deal with underwater threats. When deployed, with a carrier strike group or expeditionary strike group destroyers, and their fellow Aegis-equipped cruisers are primarily tasked with defending the fleet while providing secondary strike capabilities. With very few exceptions, destroyers are named after U.S. Navy Marine Corps and Coast Guard heroes. Frigates and Littoral Combat Ships Modern U.S. frigates mainly perform anti-submarine warfare for carrier and expeditionary strike groups and provide armed escort for supply convoys and merchant shipping. They are designed to protect friendly ships against hostile submarines in low to medium threat environments using torpedoes and lamps helicopters. 
Independently, frigates are able to conduct counter-drug missions and other maritime interception operations. As in the case of destroyers, frigates are named after U.S. Navy Marine Corps and Coast Guard heroes. As of autumn 2015 the U.S. Navy has retired its most recent class of frigates and expects that by 2020 the littoral combat ships will assume many of the duties the frigate had with the fleet. The LCS is a class of relatively small surface vessels intended for operations in the littoral zone. It was envisioned to be a networked agile, stealthy surface combatant capable of defeating anti-access and asymmetric threats in the littorals. They have the capabilities of a smaller sole transport, including a flight deck and hangar for housing two helicopters, a stern ramp for operating small boats and the cargo volume and payload to deliver a small assault force with fighting vehicles to a roll-on, roll-off port facility. The ship is easy to reconfigure for different roles including anti-submarine warfare, mine countermeasures, anti-surface warfare, intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance, homeland defense, maritime intercept special operations and logistics all by swapping mission-specific modules as needed. The LCS program is still relatively new as of 2015 with only a few active ships. But the Navy has announced plans for up to 32 ships. The Navy has announced that a further 20 vessels to be built after that will be redesignated as frigates, mine countermeasures ships, Mine countermeasures vessels are a combination of mine hunters, a naval vessel that actively detects and destroys individual naval mines and minesweepers, which clear mined areas as a whole without prior detection of the mines. The Navy has approximately a dozen of these in active service, but the mine countermeasure role is also being assumed by the incoming classes of littoral combat ships. MCM vessels have mostly legacy names of previous U.S. Navy ships, especially World War II-era minesweepers. Patrol boats A patrol boat is a relatively small naval vessel generally designed for coastal defense duties. There have been many designs for patrol boats. Though the Navy currently only has a single class, they may be operated by a nation's navy or Coast Guard and may be intended for marine and or estuarine river environments. The Navy has approximately a dozen in active service, which are mainly used in the littoral regions of the Persian Gulf but have also been used for home port patrols and drug interdiction missions. The Navy's current class of patrol boats have names based on weather phenomena. Submarines all current and planned U.S. Navy submarines are nuclear-powered, as only nuclear propulsion allows for the combination of stealth and long-duration, high-speed, sustained underwater movement that makes modern nuclear submarines so vital to a modern Blue Water Navy. The U.S. Navy operates three types, ballistic missile submarines, guided missile submarines and attack submarines. U.S. Navy ballistic missile submarines carry the stealthiest leg of the U.S. strategic triad. These submarines have only one mission, to carry in if called upon to launch the Trident nuclear missile. The primary missions of attack and guided missile submarines in the U.S. Navy are peacetime engagement surveillance and intelligence special operations precision strikes and control of the seas. To these, Attack submarines also add the battle group operations mission. Attack and guided missile submarines have several tactical missions including sinking ships and other subs launching cruise missiles gathering intelligence and assisting in special operations. As with other classes of naval vessels most U.S. submarines are named according to specific conventions. The boats of the current U.S. Ballistic missile submarine class are named after U.S. states, as the four current U.S. 
Guided missile submarines are converted Ohio-class boats they have retained their U.S. state names. The members of the oldest currently commissioned attack submarine class the are typically named for cities. The follow-on three submarines, Sea Wolf Connecticut and Jimmy Carter, share no consistent naming scheme. With the current class attack submarines, the U.S. Navy has extended the Ohio class's state-based naming scheme to these submarines. Attack submarines prior to the Los Angeles class were named for denizens of the deep while pre-Ohio-class ballistic missile submarines were named for famous Americans and foreigners, with notable connections to the United States. Aircraft Carrier-based aircraft are able to strike air, sea and land targets far from a carrier strike group while protecting friendly forces from enemy aircraft ships and submarines. In peacetime aircraft's ability to project the threat of sustained attack from a mobile platform on the seas gives United States leaders significant diplomatic and crisis management options. Aircraft additionally provide logistics support to maintain the Navy's readiness and through helicopters supply platforms with which to conduct search and rescue special operations anti-submarine warfare and anti-surface warfare. The U.S. Navy began to research the use of aircraft at sea in the 1910s, with Lieutenant Theodore G. Spud's Ellison becoming the first naval aviator on 28 January 1911, and commissioned its first aircraft carrier in 1922. United States naval aviation fully came of age in World War II, when it became clear following the attack on Pearl Harbor the Battle of the Coral Sea and the Battle of Midway that aircraft carriers and the planes that they carried had replaced the battleship as the greatest weapon on the seas. Leading Navy aircraft in World War II included the Grumman F-4F Wildcat, the Grumman F-6F Hellcat, the Chance Vought F-4U Corsair, the Douglas SPD Dauntless and the Grumman TBF Avenger. Navy aircraft also played a significant role in conflicts during the following Cold War years, with the F-4 Phantom II and the F-14 Tomcat becoming military icons of the era. The Navy's current primary fighter and attack airplanes are the multi-mission F-A-18C, D Hornet and its newer cousin the F-A-18E, F Super Hornet. The F-35 Lightning II is presently under development and was scheduled to replace the C and D versions of the Hornet beginning in 2012. Initial operational capability of the F-35C is now expected to be February 2019. The Navy is also looking to eventually replace its F-A-18E, F Super Hornets with the FAXX program. The aircraft investment plan sees naval aviation growing from 30% of current aviation forces to half of all procurement funding over the next three decades. Weapons Current U.S. Navy shipboard weapons systems are almost entirely focused on missiles, both as a weapon and as a threat. In an offensive role missiles are intended to strike targets at long distances with accuracy and precision. Because they are unmanned weapons missiles allow for attacks on heavily defended targets without risk to human pilots. Land strikes are the domain of the BGM-109 Tomahawk which was first deployed in the 1980s and is continually being updated to increase its capabilities. For anti-ship strikes, the Navy's dedicated missile is the Harpoon missile. To defend against enemy missile attack, the Navy operates a number of systems that are all coordinated by the Aegis Combat System. Medium-long-range defense is provided by the Standard Missile II which has been deployed since the 1980s. 
The standard missile doubles as the primary shipboard anti-aircraft weapon, and is undergoing development for use in theater ballistic missile defense. Short-range defense against missiles is provided by the Phalanx CIWS and the more recently developed RIM-162 Evolved Sea Sparrow missile. In addition to missiles, the Navy employs Mark 46 and Mark 50 torpedoes and various types of naval mines. Naval fixed-wing aircraft employ much of the same weapons as the United States Air Force. For both air-to-air -air and air-to-surface combat, Air engagements are handled by the heat-seeking Sidewinder and the radar-guided AMRAAM missiles along with the M61 Vulcan cannon for close-range dogfighting. For surface strikes, Navy aircraft utilize a combination of missiles, smart bombs and dumb bombs. On the list of available missiles are the Maverick Slammer and JSOW. Smart bombs include the GPS-guided JDAM and the laser-guided Paveway series. Unguided munitions such as dumb bombs and cluster bombs make up the rest of the weapons deployed by fixed-wing aircraft. Rotary aircraft weapons are focused on anti-submarine warfare and light to medium surface engagements. To combat submarines, helicopters use Mark 46 and Mark 50 torpedoes. Against small watercraft they utilize Hellfire and Penguin air-to-surface missiles. Helicopters also employ various types of mounted anti-personnel machine guns including the M60, M240 GAU-16A and GAU-17A. Nuclear weapons in the U.S. Navy arsenal are deployed through ballistic missile submarines and aircraft. The Ohio-class submarine carries the latest iteration of the Trident missile a three-stage submarine-launched ballistic missile with MIRV capability. The current Trident II version is expected to be in service past 2020. The Navy's other nuclear weapon is the air-deployed B-61 nuclear bomb. The B-61 is a thermonuclear device that can be dropped by strike aircraft such as the F-18 Hornet and Super Hornet at high speed from a large range of altitudes. It can be released through freefall or parachute and can be set to detonate in the air or on the ground. Naval Jack The current Naval Jack of the United States is the first Navy Jack traditionally regarded as having been used during the American Revolutionary War. On 31 May 2002, Secretary of the Navy Gordon R. England directed all U.S. naval ships to fly the first Navy Jack. For the duration of the War on Terror, many ships chose to shift colors later that year on the first anniversary of the September 11, 2001 attacks. The previous naval jack was a blue field with 50 white stars identical to the canton of the ensign both in appearance and size and remains in use with vessels of the U.S. Coast Guard and National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. A jack of similar design was used in 1794 though with 13 stars arranged in a 32323 pattern. When a ship is moored or anchored the jack is flown from the bow of the ship while the ensign is flown from the stern. When underway, the ensign is raised on the mainmast. The first naval jack, however, has always been flown on the oldest ship in the active American fleet which is currently notable sailors. Many past and present United States historical figures have served in the Navy. Notable officers include John Paul Jones, John Barry, Edward Preble, James Lawrence, Stephen Decatur, Jr., David Farragut, David Dixon, Porter Oliver, Hazard, Perry, Commodore Matthew Perry, George Dewey, and the officers who attained the rank of Fleet Admiral during World War II, William D. Leahy, Ernest J. King, Chester W. Nimitz, and William F. Halsey, Jr. The first American president who served in the Navy was John F. Kennedy.
Others included Lyndon B. Johnson, Richard Nixon, Gerald Ford, Jimmy Carter and George H. W. Bush. Both Theodore Roosevelt and Franklin D. Roosevelt were the assistant secretary of the Navy prior to their presidencies. Many members of Congress served in the Navy, notably U.S. Senators Bob Kerry, John McCain and John Kerry. Other notable former members of the U.S. Navy include astronauts, entertainers, authors and professional athletes. Brought to you by Wikivd.com Would you like to know more?